Hello. <clears throat> Today is um Sunday. Excuse me. October third, two thousand twenty one at <clears throat> two twenty six PM and um well I woke up it was twelve eighteen PM this afternoon and I'm still tired still sleepy. I, the past couple of nights, I didn't even take my supplement, my magnesium supplement. <clears throat> but my sleep, um, I had a lot of hours of sleep. And my body <clears throat> feels sore from working all week. My body, you know, um... So I'm still, you know, tired and sleepy. I apologize for any noise y'all might hear next door. <clears throat> He's one of those older idiots that just like to have loud TV all day, every day, nonstop. So any YouTube videos that I wanted to watch, <clears throat> um, I can't. I can't really watch without being disturbed by him and a loud TV. That's why I hate having neighbors. You know, whether it be a apartment, house, hotel, motel, wherever. You know, I hate roommates and neighbors. TV has ruined this world, you know, loud TV and loud music, and I don't know if he's a perp or not, well, last night he was sitting outside playing his guitar, but, um, I had to put my earbuds in, you know, um, So, you know, after he played his guitar, it was the moment I was getting ready to take a shower. And that's when he starts with the loud TV. So I just couldn't wait to get out of the shower. And then I had to go and ask him to turn his music down. I mean, his TV down, you know. That your TV is that loud that you can't hear anybody knocking on the door. That's just freaking inconsiderate and selfish. And the fact that somebody next door got to be, you know, have that inflicted on them. That's, and I think that could have been him smoking because when I came home yesterday evening, well, at this motel, when I came here, my room smelled like a whole bunch of cigarette smoke. <clears throat> so. I guess, you know, having a roof over your head, I guess you got to just put up with, with gang stalking perp neighbor bullshit. You know, and then I realized that if it weren't for my homeless situation, I wouldn't be banned from so many places, you know, <clears throat> but I've, when I had a place, I've never been evicted from anywhere, you know, never been evicted, so, but, um, I'm just like, when I was working the previous job, I don't remember my body being this sore. And I haven't worked in, a, like, a long time. So, 
that one was more intense than this job right here even though it's pretty much doing the same thing <clears throat> but uh, you know while well, cleaning the classrooms and the bathrooms like yesterday uh, we worked from 10.30 to 4 p.m. 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. So that's uh, five and a half hours. And so um, that was my sixth day of the week to work. And, you know, my immediate supervisor told me about, you know, Basically, I got to rest my body, you, you know, so today I might have some emergency and laundry to do because, wow, I didn't realize until yesterday that they had blood stains on, like, I didn't even take any pictures or videos, but they had blood stains on the um, shower curtain. <clears throat> but that was this cheap cleaner that I bought under two dollars. I didn't realize it had bleach in it, and uh, so well, it sprayed everything white. <laughs> But, um, me being, um, you know, yesterday I finally got to get my shopping done, you know, just enough to stay here and, um, for a week because I don't know, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I don't know what will happen tomorrow, what could happen tomorrow. You know, so, um, but today I'm taking a break, I mean, a rest from everything. I mean, I, my, I know, I, I mean, I guess my body needed that extra sleep, and I still feel like I need some more. So I've been just in here all day, and, um, you know, I bought the things that I needed yesterday. And, um, at the work. And it took me, I thought it was going to be 100 but almost $200. That, um, I mean, actually it was like $161 or something sense you know I mean me trying to find the cheapest pair of pants I could aff afford I mean having the cheapest pair of pants <clears throat> and then the black lint from the black pants get all over everywhere and I got this shirt for under five dollars I got <clears throat> the two pairs of pants for under uh, ten dollars each and so I also got, um, let's see, well, I bought two bras, I got a pack of socks, a, po a pack of, um, underwear, you know, and, you know, a few other little important things, and, you know, I got me some granola cereal, so even though it was the afternoon, you know, I still got up after 12, 15 this afternoon and ate me some cereal and part of the leftover, um, the leftover cheesecake from yesterday. I didn't too much like that cheesecake. I didn't like it. But a certain cheesecake I love, but I didn't like that one. <clears throat> so... Um, 
I got a couple of pre-made dinners. I mean, I have a fridge and a microwave in here. The f I haven't checked the microwave yet, but the fridge is kind of dirty. But, uh, you know, I mean, since I, I bought new clothes, I may not need e emergency laundry to do, but the, um, the the shower curtain had it it fell you know I I sprayed um you, you know that cleaner on the um on on the blood stains and I'm surprised how white it turned everything and so I think it was yesterday morning I know I probably shouldn't have done this but that ant bite I think it was on I never had an ant bite on a varicose vein. I don't think and so it hurt too bad for me to have popped it after the the blister from the from the ant bite after the second or third day and I just let it be I mean cuz that you know when I would me being out on the streets that you know the ants were biting me up <clears throat> and so um, yesterday I took a safety pin and popped it and then you know it, it seemed like it had became infected and i wasn't even really scratching it. i didn't even much touch it <clears throat> and um later i mean and my leg was sore all day <clears throat> i mean for the past few days and then um last like in the middle of the night i felt bad that um more pus more bloody pus seeped out and got all over the all over the um blankets on this thing you know <clears throat> but i don't know if the cleaner can clean that off but i didn't realize the cleaner i just picked whatever cheap all-purpose cleaner there was and I didn't even check you know just cuz me trying to rush and stuff and then on the way back to the hotel it started to rain anyway and it rained for a, a few minutes and it stopped right when I got you know over here and it stopped immediately the moment we pulled up so Um, uh, I, I, I'm guessing I probably could take a shower and make, and, and, um, I, I, I gotta clean the shower curtain, you know, but there's no bath in here, so I can't take a bath, like, it's not one of the other rooms where I could, um, take an Epsom salt soak, you know, for me to soak in an Epsom salt, but um, I meant to soak in some pink Himalayan salt water the other uh, the other day, but I didn't do it in the other room. Um, so yeah, me working six days. And then tomorrow morning, or like tomorrow late morning, early afternoon, I have a lot of errands to do before work. I'm not used to this working six days and then have, um, you know, one only one day off. I'm used to working five days and having two days off. But you know, I heard that they're hurting for people and need people. And I heard that most places there's a worker shortage. Um, that people are hurting for workers really bad right now. But as I said, many jobs are still been turned down, being a targeted individual. And I guess they still would not. They still wouldn't hesitate to fire you either. So. I mean, I don't know. I feel like as if I'm itching to just, you know, well, that 
curtain situation and it fell on the floor too. That curtain situation made me feel like I got to do emergency and laundry. But other than that, I feel like, well, I don't have to wash clothes for a couple of days. So I may not need to do laundry. So, um, me having, you know, my OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, you know, make things kind of challenging. And I'm trying what I could to work through it. You know, I just needed people with compassionate understanding rather than trying to force me to be normal and being unsympathetic and stuff like that. It's like you're traumatizing me even more. <clears throat> but, um, I'm thankful and glad to not have to be downtown. <clears throat> you know, I'm away from downtown. <clears throat> but right now I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling like emotionally depressed and um lonesome and depressed, you know, having not really any other targeted friends to talk to or nobody really to talk to and just going through this alone and by myself. You know, um It's crazy how a whole bunch of... I think I may have said this in another video. <clears throat> about how a whole bunch of outcasts are reje considered rejected from society. Or kicked out of society. Or banned from society. <clears throat> and then they form a, a clique group or cult or whatever. And then some of them have elitist mentality. And then kick others who are supposed to be outcasts out of their clique and make them feel like an outcast from the clique. So, it's like the worst nightmare to be rejected from the so-called TI community and going through this yourself and nobody believes you. And either even other people who claim to be going through the same thing, they don't, they turn everybody against you and make everybody hate you. <clears throat> you know, um, yesterday evening, I think it was, they had these perps drive by in a brown, light brown Malibu, and in the back of the driver's seat, um, in the back seat, somebody, the passenger in the back seat was, had their arm hanging out of the window, like when they passed right by my room, and I was airing the, my room out, you know, from the smell, from spraying the spray and stuff. And, um, so, my, my immediate supervisor, she had, um, calculated that, $15 both ways for an Uber to get over here from downtown that that's um, like a hundred about a hundred eighty dollars a week so she said that you know it was good for me to have this motel room for a week you know and I can have a shower um, you know, a place to sleep, a shower, laundry. I can walk to the job about, I'll say about 10 minutes or less walk to the job. It's very close, two blocks away. Um, and they got the grocery store right across the street. And they got a lot of restaurants around here. Um, so I didn't even calc I didn't even realize that if I work six days a week and I'm downtown, 
you know. And I'm not in Maine. I'm, I'm not saying what city I'm in. But the perps know where I'm at. I don't have to tell my business or say nothing. But the perps know where I'm at. But I'm not in mainland Pensacola. I'm not. I'm not in mainland Pensacola. In fact, I'm in a different county. I'm in a different county. This is not even a Scambia County where I'm at. So. One thing that uh, a lot of the administrators see me and they said that I look young enough that I look like one of the students. And I guess me carrying around a book bag, they also think, um, they said that they thought I looked like one of the students. Like, I can blend in very well. I'm 38 years old. I remember when I was 30, and everybody thought I was 11 or 12. And they said I actually looked like I was 11 or 12 when I was 30 years old. Now I'm 38. And still get told that I look like a child, look like one of those kids. But I think some of the kids walking around the school look like adults. You know, they look older. <clears throat> so, hmm. That's one disadvantage if people think I look so young, so then people who are teenagers think that they can bully me around and boss me. And I'm like, well, I'm old enough that, you know, if I'm, I'm, I'm 38 years old. So that means that I'm, I don't have any kids at all. And which I wish I did, you know, uh, I wish I had been married with kids. But I'm 38 years old, and I'm old enough that I could have offspring that can be like 18, 19, 20 years old, or even a little older. So, how dare any anybody who's 14 years old who think that they can order me around and tell me what to do? And then society makes it like that that person has more common sense than me and that I should listen to and obey that what that 14 year old tells me to do. And you know, people automatically assume that because I'm homeless, then they automatically assume that I'm crazy and that I need a caseworker or a case manager or that I'm um you know, mentally off and slow, like something's wrong with me the moment they find out, oh, you're homeless. Like, the day before yesterday, I felt offended because um, one of my co-workers, temporary co-workers, you know, she asked me, why don't you get a caseworker? I don't trust social workers, case workers, case managers, case workers, social workers. From foster care and the mental health system, I don't trust none of y'all, you know. So, I don't know how long this, you know, job opportunity for me will last. As I said, I don't know how long it's going to last for me or how long I get to stay here um, and be off the streets. You know, as I said, I never know. Nothing lasts long for a targeted individual, it seems like. But then anything bad that happened to me, people will make it like it's my fault or I brought it on myself. Even if the worst would have happened to me. Um, so... You can still hear that idiot's TV. And look, can you see that bathroom? No curtain. 
I'm disturbed by that. You know, um, so <clears throat> I gotta have these in. It would be a great big help if the air conditioner would stay on constantly rather than turning off and on because then that can filter out certain noise as well. Yeah, I've been just feeling lonesome and depressed and feeling high anxiety lately, especially with um, preparing, thinking about preparing for, um, you know, preparing for end times, you know, I'm feeling scared about that. So I got to go for now. <clears throat>